was seen last night. Chris DeNorfia leading off the bottom of the 11th with a home run. The Cubs a thrilling 1-0 win over the Kansas City Royals to wrap up the home schedule. A little bit of a different atmosphere tonight here in Cincinnati. It has been raining all day. We will start under a delay. Six games to go as the Cubs open up an NL Central road trip. Great to have you with us, Jim Deshays and Len Casper with you. The Cubs picked up their 49th home win in their final game at Wrigley Field, at least for the regular season, and the goal now is to get back there for some playoff games. Yeah, it's been a very magical season, including that uh, walk-off home run by Denorfia last night. A lot of good things have happened for this club this year, including that outstanding uh, uh, home record. They've been really good on the road as well. 13 walk-off wins, most of the majors. They've pitched 20 shutouts, including three on the homestay, and the last two ball games were shutouts, most for a Cubs team since 1969 and they've been very good in extra innings as well yeah the Cubs nine over uh, on the road so they play the bottom two teams in this division not a ton to play for Pirates magic number three for getting at least a home ad field advantage in the wild card Pirates and uh, Cardinals got rained out tonight they'll play two tomorrow yeah, double dip for those clubs tomorrow so the Cubs still with an outside shot very slim chance of running down uh, the Pirates uh, Joe Madden you get to get the sense that he's going to back off the gas pedal a little bit here this final week get guys ready for that play play in game when we do start it'll be right-hander Dan Heron for the Cubs so we're in a rain delay right now and after the break more of sports talk live we'll have updates here from Cincinnati Cub fans certainly well represented tonight here in Ohio There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. When it comes to fulfilling our customers' expectations, Gerald Subaru of North Aurora has earned a reputation for excellence. We are one of an elite group of Subaru dealers awarded the Subaru Stellar Care Award for excellence in customer satisfaction. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora has one of the largest Subaru inventories in Chicagoland, which means you can drive home today in the Subaru of your choice. Plus, all Gerald vehicles are covered by an exclusive lifetime warranty. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora is dedicated to you. Gerald Subaru of North Aurora is always a better deal. I guarantee it. Not enough TVs for all the NFL games on Sunday afternoons? Experience all the nonstop action live on one screen. Direct TV's Red Zone Channel. We show you every game live. Get every score as it happens, game to game. Even games next to games, next to games. Catch every touchdown from anywhere on your favorite devices, even while you're watching your game on the big screen. Order NFL Sunday Ticket Max to get the Red Zone Channel only on Direct TV, Channel 703. All right, it is raining in the Natty, so we will hope to have baseball for you, but they will start under a delay tonight. The tarp is on at the Great American Ballpark. And Todd Hollinsworth, my partner on Cubs Pre and Post, joins us here in the studio. What is the last, you've played on a lot of playoff teams, a World Series winner, as the final week is going on. It doesn't matter if the Cubs win or lose tonight. The right. game means absolutely nothing other than getting guys razor sharp ready for the playoffs. So what is this last week like for a player? Well, I think it's bigger for the offensive players than it is for the pitching. The pitching, you know. You want to rest. Well, well, yeah, but when you, you want to make sure that you're getting your innings and you're getting enough work to keep your edge. But that's what this is all about. It's always about keeping your edge and trying to maintain that. If you can't and you lose it, like if you're hot, say you get into September. We use Starling Castro as an example just because we know he's been swinging the bat particularly well. You don't want to cool off. You want to keep it going. You want to make sure you keep that edge. You make sure that the celebration that we had over the weekend doesn't get in the way of your at bat so that you let your mind start to wander. It's not a physical thing, it's more of a mental thing. How about a guy like Jake Arietta who's thrown way more innings than he's ever thrown? I mean, he's 50 over it. Do you shut him down for one start or do you go, no, 
I throw 60 to 75 pitches to stay sharp. Yeah, I think that's probably what you do. I don't think anything's going to derail Jake right now. I have no, I have no evidence whatsoever. I don't think we've watched him in any particular point, any juncture in a ball game where we've watched him waver, lose it, start to watch the velocity drop. I mean, he's given us no signs of anything. Uh, somebody asked me earlier today, you know, what's the worst case scenario, Jake going to game one? I said maybe he's a little wild because he's just a little bit more nervous in the wild card game. That's the only thing that I can think of his pitching right now he's been so effective inside the strike zone for hitters meaning you know he's using the white of the plate which is just so unusual for somebody who's dominating the way he is right now to be able to attack the strike zone that way usually we're talking about guys who are in a great groove or wearing out the corners Jake blows into the strike zone and then blows right out of the strike zone and you watch a lot of hitters very very frustrated right now great example is right there you just saw it so uh, I, I just don't really see anything getting him out of his game Holly, we know that Jake's going to pitch the wild card game, and then if they win, you'd have John Lester in game one of the DS. Who do you go with in game two? Uh, in game two of the DS, I probably would go with Jason Hamill still. I think he's still my guy. He would be on a very short leash. Um, I like his stuff. I, I like his competitive Over nature. Over Hendricks, who's been yeah, really good. Well, the last I, I, I don't, I don't. But see, here's the thing. I understand what yesterday meant, and I certainly, uh, you know, give Kyle all the credit for pitching great yesterday. But at the same time. Uh, Kyle's young and that's where maybe because I'm not certain enough it's not like there's enough separation between the two of them I, I still side with the veteran uh, it's a very short leash let me let me put it to you that way the one thing that we know about Jason is that issues in the first inning and the fifth inning specifically this year I am watching him like a hawk in the first if he settles himself down I'm really watching him in the fifth inning and if he gives you any signs like we saw last time out where he gave up those five hits in a row three run homer to Jordy Mercer at the bottom of the lineup boy it, the, the Mercer homer doesn't even happen for me. I guess that's my point. So I, I, I see it that way. I think he's going to be on a really, really short leash. And Joe manages that game much like a bullpen day. I was going to say, you bring up Madden. I mean, this is how critical is he right now? And you have this week where, you know, you have some of these games trying to keep everyone focused. But at the same time, he's been all about the zoo. He's been kind of keeping them loose. How critical and what are we going to learn about Joe Madden right now and, and kind of keeping these guys on track? Well, I mean, his voice hasn't been lost, you know, with the players at all. I mean, they believe in everything that he says. They believe in everything that he does <laughs> off the, you know, whether we're bringing in animals or magicians or whatever the case may be. Uh, there's a great deal of focus. There is also a looseness. Um, I think that Joe has, you know, what do you say, compart compartmentalized, you know, things so specifically like, you know, when we win, we celebrate for 30 minutes, boom, we wipe it off, we're done, we get ready for tomorrow. We lose, it's the same thing. We, we, you know, we celebrate. You know, whatever happens, he has been able to just put things in place. And I think this team gets that. They get that about each other. They know that they've got to win as a unit and as a group. My, the, the biggest thing, I think, for Joe is figuring out his roster for the, you know, for the wild card game. He's mat mixed and matched with so many people so well here in September, even August, that I think it's going to be a little complicated. You're going to see some guys who have put up some good numbers here late, maybe not make that game. But I don't think he's afraid to do stuff. I mean, I, you know, the, oh, let's keep in mind, he, does. he came here with uh, Theo and Jed, not by accident. They, they love the fact that he's got the same data-driven approach that these guys do. And, and I was talking to Lester yesterday, and he goes, you know, one difference when, when you get the hook from Joe is that you get a very good reason. In other words, Joe may say, hey, you were, you know, you were throwing, you threw three pitches here. In other words, he's always got a pretty decent rationale, and it's almost always, you know, driven by pretty hard data. He's, not, he's, a, he's wonderful in, you know, impromptu situations. He's good at talking. He does all those things really well well but he does his homework and so when he comes in you know wh whatever lineup he comes in with whatever pitching mm -hmm. he, he's weighed a lot of factors before he goes ahead and does that stuff so guys he's, he's obviously getting that across to these guys as well well and it's got to be communicated but it also has to be appreciated by the players themselves and that's the thing that we've noticed about this young group that's why Joe was such a perfect fit but you know when you typically have younger players they're willing to listen they're willing to play multiple positions as we saw Chris Bryant do last night and do things that are maybe a little bit outside the norm at some point that might be a little bit more complicated I heard a little bit of that down there in Tampa Bay uh, you know as things were winding down I happened to be in their spring training this year and there it wasn't a knock on Joe Madden at the time I mean nothing but praise but the fact that you know the, the shuffling around for a few individuals got a little stale and you know it was to the point where they're like I want to be out there every day I want to play against the lefties I want to play against the righties and sometimes you know Joe absolutely you know data driven uh, factual evidence backing up most of the decisions that he's making but it's got to also be received by the players in a way that 
you know, the smile still on the face. Holly, when you look at this one game playoff in Pittsburgh, as we assume it will be, that's an interesting ballpark to try to put a lineup together for. And I, I kind of look at this offense and I see certain guys that I'd want their bat in the lineup, but I don't know that I want their glove in the lineup. True. So how do you handle Starlin like, being one of them? Starlin being yeah. one of them, Kyle Schwarber in left field. I mean, I look at the Pirates and their athletic outfield. I think that's one of the reasons they've been so good because they can run everything right. down in a giant outfield. So how do you approach putting a lineup together for one game? Well, I'll say it like this without getting into the lefty righty sort of thing is I think that'll probably be more of the decision maker than anything. I'd be more willing to uh, go with the offensive guys early in the ball game. And here's why Jake Arietta, as I've told you, I used to watch and I usually watch most pitchers. I watch their pitch counts, their pitch sequencing, you know, momentum, velocity as the game goes on. With Jake, I, I really don't watch the eff his effectiveness any longer because he's been in such a groove. It's, you know, it's, it's almost pointless for me to sit there and count pitches or to watch. But what I do watch is the hitters, and I watch the reaction. And I tell Cappy all the time, I said, eight innings, four hard hit balls. Seven innings, three hard hit balls. And he's that, always right. Right. Yeah, exactly. and, and the thing to me, so that to me, you know, I, I would be more willing to maybe go with the less of the defensive player, knowing that they're probably not running routes out there. You know what I mean? You know, I, I don't need Kyle Schwarber running way deep into the left center field gap to make a aren't coming off the bats of hitters with Arietta out there but as soon as Jake comes out of the game I start to kind of make sure that I have people in place you know you look at this team and everybody is just hanging their hat that Jake Arietta is going to pitch but we keep forgetting Garrett Cole at the other end awfully <laughs> special well I you know and that's the interesting thing and I've told you about these two nothing wins that Jake continues to get that's that is the approach that you have against an ace, against an elite, is keep it close, give ourselves a shot late. You know, you think about it, and uh, it, 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 it's funny because you've watched the majority of these starts here of late against, you know, with Jake on the mound, there hasn't been a whole lot of offense for us. There's been, well, Jake gets it done once again. So you, you, I'd love to see the offense start to wake up and start to roll a little bit and maybe give him three or four runs because then I think he'll just take it on. Do you agree with this that it might be easier to not have to face the Pirates in a five game series if you can knock them off in the wild card game then the other way around taking out the Cardinals in game one but then having to deal with the Pirates and their great pitching for five games. I think we match up well with the Cardinals I gotta be honest I really do I think that uh, with the injuries the kind of the, you know the way that their offense is right now the way our offense has played against them this year I feel like if we if our bats get rolling we get a little just a little bit more consistent you know, I know we've been a little stale here of late I think that we'll be just fine we match up with them very well I feel like we can shut them down you know I go back to that series in St. Louis you know we, we talked about that one inning what that one inning meant or what a cardinal win sometimes is we had won every inning in the first game the second game the third game all the way up to that eighth inning where they put up the three spot and they steal that game that day they went at four to three you know obviously at the time we were talking about chasing them so we had to take away one of the wins so we went into st louis they won one inning in a three game series yet we only picked up one game chasing them down so it's kind of an interesting dynamic right there but all the while if you go back and look at it we went into st louis and we played really good baseball and that to me is what i take from it steven piscotti a scary situation now there he is taking one to the wall that was the game that they came back right uh, this is last night though you and i were Oof. watching this in the newsroom <sighs> You've been in this situation before. Have you ever had anything like that happen to you? Oh yeah. Oh, well, I, I mean, I, not to not to fall into you know Stephen Piscotti's situation. I was never the guy that was that right there. I, I I mean, I know where communication breaks down. Both guys start to panic a little bit. We call it that gray area. PNC Park provides that. You see how deep that gap is right there. Both guys. I also mentioned to you, which was kind of interesting. This happened just after all the rearranging of the outfielders had gone down. Jason Hayward actually started in center field, moved over to right. Scotty went to left. Burgess comes into the game and he's in center field. It was I think it was an inning later. You see it's in the seventh right there. So sometimes what happens is communication. It's got to be just so good. But that ball was just pretty much in no man's land. And both guys, you know, in a game in which St. Louis was you know what would what, what, the Pirates left the bases loaded four different times left uh, 16 guys on base last night I mean they were I don't want to call them desperate but they knew that this was obviously a tight game and any ball could be the difference so that ball was going to get caught both guys went for it and 
So Scotty ends up injured, but thankfully, uh, good reports today. Sounds like he's out of the hospital. He's back with the team and that just got some bruising. Unbelievable. Wow. They lose Carlos Martinez on Friday, Yadi Molina against the Cubs a week and a half ago. Piscotti goes down last night. Adam Wainwright says he's going to try and pitch off a torn Achilles tendon uh, <laughs> in the bullpen at least. Right. It's amazing what they've dealt with. They man up better than anybody. Uh, you know, I had a lot of conversation about them this morning over at MLB Network. So, uh, I mean, it, it really is in a lot of ways hard to explain. I, I really can't compare them to another organization. <coughs> They're an organization that gets compared to. So, Yes, they do. Tommy fans and the Biscottis and, you know, the, the cruises. I mean, these next guys. Next man up. Right, next man up. And that's a deep organization. That is a message that is delivered not only through Mike Matheny to the big league club, but one that also goes to the minor league system as well. All right, we have a baseball game tonight, weather permitting. Holly, you'll be with me for the post. Right, sounds Look good. forward to it. Sounds good, buddy. Right, you buying dinner tonight? Yeah. All right, <laughs> Derek Rose is injured, and they barely finished the first practice of training camp. A broken orbital bone after taking an elbow to the face. He will need surgery. Sam Smith from Bulls.com joins us with the latest on D. Rose next. Which truck brand do you think offers best in class HD towing, best V8 horsepower, and has Motor Trend's 2015 truck of the year? Ram. Chevy. What do you think? A Ford. Oh. Here's the answer. That's the Chevy Silverado HD, <laughs> the Chevy Silverado, and the Chevy Colorado. Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. It's truck month. Now qualified buyers get 0% financing for 60 months. Plus find your bonus tag and get 4,000 cash allowance on select Silverado 1500 crew cabs in stock. See your local Chevy dealer today. One day I woke up and bam, boobs. <laughs> she shows them off. Double trouble. <laughs> I caught it early. I love being a woman. <laughs> Having a positive attitude actually helped a lot. She's my hero. It's a sisterhood, and you will get through it. Advocate Healthcare understands the worry that comes with waiting. That's why we offer mammograms and the results today. Why wait? Whoa, 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 Marge! You're not Marge. I'm sort of Marge. We both drive a stick, we both like saving money on car insurance, and we both feel integrity, such as that of healthcare in the America of the U.S. And therefore, yes, thank you. No, no, please, stop! stop. Sorta of you isn't you. Start with a quote from eSurance and get a set of discounts personalized to you, not someone sorta of like you. eSurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. Hey folks, down there at Bob Reverend Gertie Hyundai, look out below for model year end saving. Right now, lease a brand new 2015 Hyundai Elantra for $169 a month or get 0% APR for 60 months on select new models. And we can beat any deal on a new Hyundai. Bob Roman. Bob Roman's Gurney Hyundai on Grand Avenue right across from Gurney Mills. High school football fans, this season you have the chance to show everyone what's going on at your game. Just shoot and share the best plays, moments, and celebrations with us by using the hashtag CSN What a Game. Comcast Sportsnet, Chicagoland's home for press. White Sox, Royals, tomorrow at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Wow, take a look at the size of that Powerball grand prize. And you know, anything's possible. Okay, if you're just sitting down at your dinner table, the breaking news from less than an hour ago, Derek Rose took an elbow to the face during practice. The team released a statement just a little bit ago saying Rose has a left orbital fracture. Surgery tomorrow, timetable to be determined after surgery. Sam Smith, the great writer from Bulls.com, joins us on our UPS Store hotline. All right, Sam, we have bad news on Derek Rose. We again don't know a timetable, but what is your takeaway on this? Jeez. Well, uh, certainly uh, bad luck, you, you know, if, uh, as far as health goes, you, you know, any, any luck J Derek has had has been, has been bad, you know, given the circumstances and especially, you know, obviously with all the knee injuries. And finally this summer being able to, you know, work on his game and, and um, uh, work out without uh, being uh, limited by time or, or uh, you, you, know, you know, any, any uh, surgeries. That said... You know, this is this is. I mean, it's not to me, so it sounds less serious. But it's this is not a catastrophic injury like he's had. The, uh, you know, it's it's not going to feel good. <laughs> he's going to be in a lot of pain afterwards. 
but uh, players can play. You know, generally players who've had this and have had surgery generally miss about two to three weeks. Sam, when you looked at the press conference yesterday, he's being criticized, Derek, that is, for bringing up free agency and how he's got to get paid in a couple of years. And we're okay, we're comfortable, but I got to worry about PJ's future. He's made $300 million. Does anybody give him advice on how to handle PR situations or nope, he just goes out there? I thought that was um, really uh, unfair, unjust, and, and biased in, in a lot of ways. Um, he didn't. He did not volunteer uh, about free agency. He was. He was taught. You know, he may not articulate as well as some people would like him to, but not everybody in society does. Um, he was being honest. You know, I find that pretty ironic. You know that the media complains a lot about the players. They lie to us and they don't tell the truth. You don't think everybody in the NBA, because the salary cap is going to almost triple, talking about it. That's why LeBron James has taken one-year contracts. You don't think he's talking about free agency? Kevin Durant hasn't committed to uh, Oklahoma City. He's talking about, you know, he's not letting the, the talk about Washington die. He's going to be a free agent after the summer. Free agency is a part of life in sports and certainly in the NBA, given the TV contract. So to jump on Derrick Rose, just because he, he mentioned it, I don't quite understand what Chicago's about sometimes. Um, you know, this kid has played through tremendous injuries. He's got hurt at work, you know, after he had missed 12 of the previous 17 games, playing 40 minutes in a playoff game. He got injured then. So he's extending himself for his team. He came back as quickly as he could from meniscus surgery and led the team basically in minutes played in the playoffs last season. So he, so he was talking, you know, in generalities about, uh, he, 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 you know, this suit that was filed against him, this civil suit, you know, that's also been built up in a lot of ways, and, and mentioned free agency, which every player in the NBA is talking about. I was at Summer League and USA Basketball. Every, every, every single player was talking about, can you believe this money coming out? Do you know when I'm going to be a free agent? So, so he mentions it, too. And it's, it's something like so. Supposedly, he's he's all about himself and his money. He 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 wasn't he wasn't standing up and saying I'm going to be free agent. He was asked, "Are you talking about free agency?" He said, "Well, yeah, you know, everybody is." But so Sam, anyway, so I, I don't I don't know what everybody's so upset about. I, I you know it's a, it it seems to me really a cheap shot. But Sam, perception becomes reality, and that is not just locally, nationally. If you tune in on any show nationally, people are just dumbfounded that a guy who's been out and dealt with serious injury at work as much as he has, while LeBron James is doing an interview yesterday, whether it's lip service or not, he's saying it. When he comes out and says, I I'm absolutely haunted by the loss to Golden State, it killed me to not win that championship. That, that's what I think Derek had to say yesterday. You know what? We'll talk about free agency in two years. All I care about is that I'm healthy and I'm going to try and win a championship for my teammates and this great city of Chicago. And every time he has a chance to spin things the right way, it comes out the wrong way. Why? In other words, you're sitting there and saying, give me a fantasy. Give me a fairy tale. Lie to me because I'm pretty stupid. You know, just tell me, just tell me, just tell me a, a, a fairy tale. Because I would rather believe a fairy tale than the reality going on. This is the same media all the time that says, you know, why can't guys be straight with us? Why can't you know? The same thing happened with the Blackhawks. It seemed to me a couple of weeks ago, or whenever, the, you know, the guy did the press conference at camp. He he, he couldn't say anything, so he he sat there and said, I, I can't say anything. What do you want from me? And everyone's always morally. You know, upset. How dare you not say anything to us? <laughs> and so here's Derek Rose. He says something that we're mad at you too. Yeah, so yeah, can't have it either way. Look, judge people by what they do, not what they say. That's what uh, that's what we always hear. And Derek Rose has been on the court, committing himself to his team. Could you find a game where he hasn't played hard? He hasn't thrown himself at the basket. He hasn't done everything. Came back from his third knee surgery, and as I said, led the team basically in minutes played in the playoffs. And if you watch that playoff series, he was, throw, he was throwing himself on the floor to the point that you were wincing about it because we know his history. So because somebody says something, watch what happened as opposed to, like I say, not, every, not everybody presents themselves in an articulate way, way 
I might like it or you might like it. But but judge people by what they do. And, and it seems to me that that would be more significant. It's a great debate. Love to keep having it over a pizza with you one day. Thank you for your time. All right. I hope I didn't piss you off. Oh, come on. I love battling with you. Even though I think you're 100% wrong on this one, but we'll talk. All right. Well, you got the microphone, so I can't lose on that one, right? Have a great... Hey, just on, on his eye fracture, I think, I think it, you know, an injury goes, it, it's, it's not the worst news. Uh, Jason Terry missed five games after surgery. Joe Johnson missed six games after surgery. Chris Bosch missed five or six. And, and Rondo missed six last year after the same surgery. So, you know, it's... It is a good, there's a reasonable chance you would think he'd be back for the opener. Appreciate the time. All right. Thanks, Cap. If there he is, that's our guy, Sam Smith, former Tribster, and now doing great work at Bulls.com. I couldn't disagree with him more. I think he's conflated two things, and I said earlier in the show that I think I, I never have a problem with a ball player looking after himself long term. Because, again, there's a window. You no know, question. Yes, and I agree. So th th it didn't upset me in that sense. But just for timing, just for optics, for the whole thing, it's really stupid to pick the opening of the season to do something like that. You know what I mean? It's, you're not even, it's not even like somebody caught you post game and, you know, your teammates either let you down it's not or like something. his contract's up at the end of the year. He's got two years. Right, and apparently it, he wasn't even asked a question. No, right? I, that's I, that's, what, he that's wasn't really asked. I mean, he was asked about, I don't remember the exact wording of the question, but something to the effect of with the allegations going on, you know, are you looking towards, you know, well, what are you doing to get your mind tunnel off vision of it? In the off right, season. and then that's when he offered this whole thing about free agency. And, Jim, I, I think your point is right that, you know, guys have a finite window to make money and they need to make it. But this is two years away. And then to make a comment, uh, listen, I, I don't want to pick apart every word, but when you're talking about being comfortable and wanting to secure your future, when you've made $185 million from Adidas and the Bulls contract that he's currently being paid and he is the, according to Forbes, like I said earlier, the 69th richest celebrity in the world, it just comes off as really, really out of touch to most people. Yeah, but again, this is par for the course for Derrick Rose. Yeah. And uh, look, I think... Sam's point is fair about saying it is absolutely true that it's, you know you have to be you can't be uh, you can't ask for players to be honest and then criticize them when they are being honest. But as we've said many times, Derrick Rowe's honesty doesn't always come out the right way. And this is a case just like when he you know last year when he said oh, I got to be you know and maybe he doesn't want to put forth all the effort because he's concerned about his future. He's got to think about his future career and he doesn't want to push it. You know, the way he says this stuff, it just comes off the wrong way. No question. Guys, thank you for working overtime. That is a wrap for Sports Talk Live. Rain Delay Theater, presented by the Chevy Silverado. Sportsnet Central is up next. The latest news from the Natty. Vincent Goodwill here. Talk about yet another injury for D. Rose. Still in a rain delay. Keep it to right here for the latest on Comcast Sportsnet. I'll see you after the Cub game. Aruba, Jamaica. Now we can actually take you. To Costa Rica, Bahama. Hi! Come on, pretty mama. Belize, Puerto Rico. People, why don't we go down to Mexico? We'll get there fast and you can take it slow. Anywhere you want to go, all the way down to Dominican Republic. Nice hit. Southwest is bringing our low fares to tropical destinations. Book now at southwest.com. Stay warm this winter with a Life Pro Smart Heater from Menards. This portable infrared heater has four infrared heating elements and heats a medium-sized room, $59.99. This tower infrared heater includes a stylish wood cabinet and heats a large-sized room, $119. Add a fresh look with Mohawk ceramic tile. 7 by 20 inch wood lane floor tile comes in two finishes, $139 each. 3 by 12 inch glass wave wall tiles provide a beautiful accent to any design. In two finishes, $299 each. Save big money at Menards. The automotive brand that more people search, buy, and buy again is Ford. Most search because Ford has the technology and efficiency people want. Best selling five years in a row because Ford vehicles are a great value. And most loyal because they're worth coming back to. That's because cars like Ford Focus have great efficiency, performance, and handling. Ford, the brand more people search, buy, and buy again. Now get a Ford Focus with 0% financing for 72 months plus $1,000 bonus cash. All season long, every week, Bear Down with CSN Chicago for the most comprehensive Bears football coverage in town. 
Mondays starting at 4.30, go live to Hallis Hall for a weekly game updates on Bears Recap. Tuesdays at 11 p.m., get the player's perspective with the Antrell Roll Show. Then, Wednesdays at 4.30, get a closer look at the Monsters of the Midway on Bears Huddle. And Thursdays at 4.30, break open up the playbook with Bears Blitz. Get the most Bears coverage in town right here on CSN Chicago. With a new Joe, a new team, a new state of mind, this just might be your year, Cubs fans. And to celebrate, we've upped our Twitter game, and you should too. We're stacked with game time updates, fast fan reactions, instant scores, and exclusives from insider Patrick Mooney. Share all your own favorite boys and blue moments with at CSN Cubs, and we'll keep an eye out. I'm Gordon Beckham, and you're watching the home of White Sox baseball, CSN Chicago. Tonight's scheduled game in Cincinnati between the Cubs and Reds currently in a rain delay. We'll get you out to Len Casper and Jim Deshays for the series opener as soon as the weather clears up. But until then, we welcome you into Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. I'm Mark Shanowski. The Bulls get some bad news on the first day of practice. Derrick Rose suffers yet another injury. Jose Abreu is hoping to take on a bigger leadership role with the White Sox. Plus, does unbeaten Notre Dame have the edge in Saturday's showdown with Clemson? It's all straight ahead on Sportsnet Central. Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. And we start with this news alert from Bulls camp. Derrick Rose suffered a fracture of his left orbital bone when he was hit by an elbow during this morning's first practice of training camp. Rose will undergo a surgical procedure tomorrow, and at that point, the Bulls are expected to provide a timetable for his return to the court. Joining us now by phone is Vincent Goodwill, our Bulls insider from CSNChicago.com. Vinny, I know you are at practice this morning. We've seen a number of orbital bone injuries in the NBA over the years. Now, some players can come back pretty quickly wearing a protective mask, but given Derek's history, any guesses on how long he might be out? <laughs> Mark, your guess is as good as mine. I think uh, in the NBA, the two most recent cases are uh, Mike Conley of the Memphis Grizzlies. He, he suffered a... Uh, a left over the bone. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which side of the face it was, but he suffered that in the first round against Portland. Came back early in the series against Golden State, but wasn't himself. And also, uh, maybe more germane to this situation, Victor Oladipo from the Orlando Magic. He suffered a, a over the bone fracture late in training camp and wound up come, wound up having surgery October 25th and made it back to play in no, in middle November, like the 14th or something. So. You know, maybe three weeks is the is the time frame for uh, a non-urgent type of situation because it's not the playoffs, because it's not, you know, uh, that type of situation. And, you know, once again, it's just another situation where, you know, their pose is in the center of everything. It's another injury. It's not a knee. You know, it, it's not a knee surgery or anything like that. So it, I guess you can take some form of solace into that it was just an errant elbow it could have happened to anybody and now the Bulls just have to figure out a contingency plan to fill in. Yeah as you mentioned given the history of this injury with players in the league a very good chance that Rose will be available for the regular season opener on October 27th. Vinny you know the talk at media day was all about Derek having such a great summer not in rehab he was doing basketball and conditioning drills how much might this injury though set him back in trying to reestablish himself as one of the league's elite players? I don't think this will uh, diminish any of the work that he's done over the summer as far as with his body and uh, with his game. I think the one thing that will slow him up is sort of his uh, acclimation to Fred Hoiberg's system to where, you know, this this time in training camp is where he's putting in his offensive set, he's putting in his philosophy, things like that. And as we all can expect, this, although it's going to be the same Bulls team in terms of makeup, I think their identity is going to be a little bit different. You're going to see different lineups out there. But he's going to miss some valuable time of playing with, you know, maybe some of the, the, the floor spreading groups and things of that nature. He's going to have to develop chemistry with new lineups and things like that when he does come back. But he won't have the preseason 
tracks, he worked the kinks out. Whenever he comes back, whether it's the season opener or a couple weeks after, worst case scenario, you know, basically the rest of the team will already be in some form of lather and Derek will be playing catch up. He just won't be playing catch up, you know, limping around off of a knee injury, which, you know, like I said, is, is obviously the worst case scenario in a situation like this. Things move very quickly in the NBA. The Bulls have a preseason game one week from tonight. Who's next in line at point guard? Is it Aaron Brooks? Is it Kirk Heinrich? Or maybe a guy to watch is Jordan Crawford, who signed on with the Bulls last week. Well, when you talk about Jordan Crawford, he, he's from Detroit. He's from my area. So I've, I've, known, I've known Jordan and his game for a, a number of years. But I think they're going to go with a familiar face. I do think that they're going to go with Aaron Brooks. If you ask uh, Jimmy Butler who should be the Bulls starting point guard, he will probably t tell you himself. But I don't think uh, Fred Hoiberg is going to go with that. I think you're going to go with Aaron Brooks as a known commodity and have Heinrich back him up and have Jordan Crawford up also in the mix there. He just want to be a, a, another adjustment, a chance for Brooks to sort of establish himself as he has in Jerry Rose's absence over the past year or so. So I don't think it's going to be too much uh, too much backtracking off of the rest of the team. I just think Rose's timing and everything else that he has to do as far as getting acclimated to his new system, I think that's going to be the biggest change. The Bulls just can't seem to shake this injury bug. First, it was Taj Gibson's ankle surgery, then Mike Dunleavy with back surgery, and now the Derrick Rose injury. Is Fred Hoiberg starting to wonder if maybe he should have stayed at Iowa State? I don't know, but maybe he's going to think there's something in the water. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm sure anybody who's watched the Bulls over the past uh, several seasons has watched this team just be uh, just bit by the injury bug, whether it was Joe Kim Noah, whether it was Todd Gibson, like you said, now with Dunleavy and today Derrick Rose. I mean, the worst, the one thing about Dunleavy is he's technically, I guess you could say, your fifth starter. And with Derrick Rose, it's an orbital bone fracture. It's, but it, once again, it's not a knee. I, I know everybody is sort of in a panic right now in Chicago because you hear Derrick Rose and injury in the same sentence. But this is really not the worst case scenario now. You know, getting in, hitting the face on the elbow is certainly not a fun experience, but it's not like he blew out one knee or the other knee uh, again like he did in 2012 but then again in uh, 2013. So I, I do think that everybody sort of needs to take a step back and relax and just and the most of you will miss, you'll miss a handful of games from Derrick Rose in a regular season, but presumably if all that has been said about Derrick Rose this summer, has been true from a basketball standpoint, then he should come in and be just fine. Well, Vincent, thank you so much for joining us. Never a dull day on the Bulls beat. One practice in and already another injury. <laughs> You're right, Mike. That's our insider, Vincent Goodwill. And here's a look at Derrick Rose's injury history since that MVP season back in 2010-11, which seems like a lifetime ago. You see the litany, sprained toe, strained back. He had the assortment of injuries in 2012. Then, of course, he suffered that torn ACL in the playoffs against Philly. Missed the entire next season. Missed 71 games in 13-14 with a torn meniscus. Ankle and hamstring injuries. And then another meniscus tear last year. Now it's the orbital bone. But as Vinny mentioned, given the history of this injury, there's a lot of optimism that Derrick Rose will be in the lineup opening night against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Much more positive topic. The Cubs continue to come up with new milestones in their amazing turnaround year. Last night, Kristen Orfia became the first pinch hitter in Major League history to belt a walk-off homer for the only run of an extra inning win. Which leads us to the Cubs' hunt for October, presented by Feldco. It's gone by quickly. Only six games left in the Major League regular season. But Joe Madden and his coaching staff met yesterday to try to figure out which pitchers and reserves will be on that 25-man playoff roster. Just went over like uh, some general things. Just looked at numbers on a roster and what it would take in a wild card game and to break down with pitchers and position players, things like that. And uh, who would you want to keep on? And would any, any extra special talents you'd want to keep on? So it didn't get even, it didn't get specific. It's just like generalities uh, to give the coaching staff something to think about. Uh, this is what you probably would need in a one-game playoff kind of a thing. Um, and then to get beyond that would also require a different form of thinking for a five-game series. So 
We didn't put actual names. Of course, you know the names, most of them. I mean, we're talking about a couple, three, four names that might be different. So we wanted uh, our guys to start thinking about it in those terms. And that wild card game one week from tomorrow. It's time for Built for Business, presented by Comcast Business. Cubs are 10 and 6 against Cincinnati this year. It's their first series victory over the Reds since 2009. Now in those 16 games, the Cubs have hit 21 homers. They're averaging four and a half runs per game. Hopefully, we'll have baseball in Cincinnati tonight. That's Comcast Business, Built for Business. And still ahead on Sportsnet Central, the Bears stuck to a very conservative game plan in Seattle last Sunday. Coming up, former head coach Dave Wanstead explains why it might just open up the playbook a bit and take some shots down the field against the Raiders. Notre Dame faces its toughest test yet on Saturday, but Clemson coach Dabo Swinney thinks the Irish might have an unfair advantage against the 12th-ranked Tigers. And Jose Abreu looks to make an impact in the locker room next year, reveals his off-season goal. We'll tell you about it after this quick timeout. Sportsnet Central, brought to you by Comcast Business. Comcast Business, built for business. I just had a horrible nightmare. My company's entire network went down and I was home in bed unaware. But that would never happen. Comcast Business monitors my company's network 24 hours a day and calls and emails me of something like, this scary storm takes it offline so I can rest easy. What, you don't have a desk bed? Don't be left in the dark. Get proactive alerts 24 seven. Comcast Business, built for business. Mom? It's perfect. Daddy, this is it. Oh, now I know why dads cry at weddings. <laughs> hey, just go to LendingTree.com. You can shop for a personal loan for almost anything and save money. At LendingTree, shop and compare loan offers from top lenders, and in just five minutes, you can save thousands. LendingTree, the place to shop for money. And she's only going to wear it once. It's no surprise how the beautiful season of fall got its name, especially for property owners when leaves fall by the millions. But the incredible cyclone rate can end the backbreaking work of fall cleanup by vacuuming all the leaves and debris that litter your property. And now through this TV offer, you could try it for yourself for a full year, risk-free. The Cyclone Ray can just do any riding mower and turns year-round property care into a ride in the park. With its powerful Vanguard engine and patented Miracle Impeller, it gives you 10 times the lifting power of mowers and many times the hauling capacity. Storing it takes less than five minutes using no tools. You can even hang it on a wall. Try the Cyclone Rake risk-free for a full year. If you don't love it, send it back and we'll return 100% of your money, including shipping costs, both ways. You risk nothing. Call 1-800-807-2307 now for your free information kit and mention this promo code, 15173. Welcome back to the opening three weeks of the NFL season. The Bears rank near the bottom of the league in both points scored and points given up. They're allowing over 35 per game while scoring just a little bit over 15. And after getting shut out by the Seahawks, former Bears head coach Dave Wanstead says the Bears need to take some shots down the field against Oakland this coming Sunday. I think they're going to have to, Mark, because, you know, this uh, Omari Cooper, the best, you know, the top receiver in the draft last year out of Alabama, and then you got Crabtree on the other side, an experienced guy who's been in the league, and Derek Carr. I mean, this guy, is, I think, is an up-and-coming star, so they are going to score points. They are going to they are going to make plays in the passing game, so I think when John Fox looks at the big picture, he, he's these guys are more explosive I, than the team they just played from an offensive standpoint. So to match that and playing at home, I think that Jimmy Clausen, they will open it up more and they'll give him more opportunities to throw the ball down the field. What can they do to help on special teams? They gave up a kick return for a touchdown, a long punt return that set up another score. 
What can they do to try to reinforce well, that? They'll obviously work on it this week as much as you can work on things, you know, in the NFL right now with pads and non-pads and the limited amount of contact you can do. But usually on every team, on every team when I was head coach, 17 years, I kept four or five guys that were my core special teams guys. And, you know, they might not be the front runner. The offensive coaches really didn't want them and the defensive coaches really didn't want them. But they were as critical to the success of special teams as offense and defensive star so you have those guys and then you're kind of filling in with you know backups on every other side of the ball and those guys have to contribute well the Bears have already lost two games at Soldier Field they need to find a way to get a win at home that comes up Sunday against the visiting Oakland Raiders coach will be here to help us break it down next Sunday on Inside the Huddle If we play better defense and we support Deshaun, we can be the kind of football team we hope to be. Kaiser's going for it all down the sidelines deep, and it is Will Fuller again for a touchdown. Georgia Tech wasn't ready for Notre Dame. Osiris dodges a man in the field. He's down the sideline with that speed. Here's We're going to like this win for 24 hours and we get right to work on Clemson. Well, after scoring 60 points for the first time in 19 years, Notre Dame faces a daunting task on Saturday going on the road to play 12th-ranked Clemson. And the game Saturday night is already a hot ticket, especially with Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney. I got people calling me that I ain't talked to in 20 years. Hey, man, got some tickets? I really want to come up this weekend. Just need five. It's a little unfair that they brought the Pope into town. Uh, just in time just in time for the Clemson game I think that's kind of a low blow obviously everybody uh, knows you know who Notre Dame is and uh, the success that they've had when they won in whatever 11 national championships and uh, they're Notre Dame I mean listen man I, I I just I hope they don't bring Joe Montana with them uh, I can tell you that I mean they're just a great program that have had tons of great players and all Americans and great coaches and and uh, uh, they're a brand of their own. Notre Dame Clemson, one of the premier games on the Saturday schedule. Well, now back to baseball. And before tonight's contest against Kansas City, Jose Abreu told reporters he wants to learn English during the offseason and take on more of a leadership role next year. And that's just fine with the skipper, Robin Ventura. Well, it's a good thing to hear because we know how he operates. You know, we, we know how he comes every day and, and prepares and how he plays the game. Um, you know, a prideful player. So, you know, anytime a guy like that wants to step up and do those things, you're you're happy to hear that. You see those skills within him? I mean, your best player isn't always your leader, but, but uh, in this case, could that be bold? It, it could be bold just because of how he goes about his work. I, I, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but... Uh, you know, a guy that doesn't speak a lot except, you know, he tells the truth and, and is very upfront about it. And I think that for him, um, that it's possible for him to be both of those things. The Cubs wrapped up their regular season home schedule with a win last night. Coming up, Joe Madden explains why the atmosphere at Wrigley Field is like nothing he's seen before. We'll also introduce you to a Blackhawks defenseman with some pretty big skates to fill. Luke Stuckmeyer catches up with Trevor Daly when Sportsnet Central returns. Country Financial wants to know, what if you could own your future? I mean, I would spend it with family and friends. Travel more. Retire. Can make decisions that aren't fear-based about money. At Country Financial, we take the time to get to know you so we can develop a plan with insurance and financial solutions to help you take charge of where you want to be. Have that fear removed from my mind. To help you own your future. To be in control of your future. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. I worked for Jimmy John's for six years. I'm an opening slash training manager. I hired this joke in January. And she never regretted it. <laughs> I've taught this guy everything he knows. Yeah, but I'm still faster. Faster, my butt. Every now and again, I like to think that people can catch up to my speed. I got faster than that in like two months. His mouth got a little bit faster. When you get trained by the best, you become the best. <laughs> I absolutely love making sandwiches, and I love working with people. Just getting to do that every day is by far the best part of my job.
Honda knows just because you're looking for a utility vehicle doesn't always mean you're looking for adventure. You might just be looking for a coffee table. That's why our vehicles come with smartly designed interiors and technology to adapt to just about anything. It's more than just utility. It's modern utility. Nothing compares to a Honda. KBB.com's best value brand. Bring luxury to your home with help from my family's store, Sherlock's Carpet and Tile. If you've been waiting to upgrade your carpet, wait no longer. It's National Karistan Month. Come in and take advantage of up to $1,000 in rebates. From traditional to contemporary, America's best carpet brings quality, beauty, and elegance to any interior setting. Let us help you upgrade the home of your dreams with Karistan Carpets. Come celebrate Sherlock's 40th anniversary and live beautifully. We are just eight days away from the Blackhawks raising another Stanley Cup championship banner. Comcast Sportsnet will preview the big night starting at 5.30 with Sports Talk Live from the United Center. Pre-game coverage continues at 6.30 on Sportsnet Central. And after the game, flip back over to CSN for all your post-game reaction. Well, as Hawks fans know, another major turnover on the roster following the third Stanley Cup title in the past six seasons. Top six forward Patrick Sharp was traded to Dallas, but the Hawks did get a quality defenseman in return. And as Luke Stuckmeyer tells us, Trevor Daly's got some big skates to fill on the blue line this season. After 11 seasons in a Dallas Stars sweater, Trevor Daly is adjusting to a new team, a new city, and a new way of doing things. Well, so far it's been good. Um, you know, the guys around the room have been great. Uh, to me, the older guys in here welcome me pretty well, so um, it's been enjoyable. Daly gave Dallas a big boost last season, posting career highs with 16 goals and 22 assists. It's something the Blackhawks were well aware of when they were trading Patrick Sharp and wanted something coming back to Chicago. And Joe Quenville, well, he's looking forward to that offensive boost. I think Trevor gives us a nice uh, dimension from the back end uh, out the point. I think he's got some quickness in uh, being joining the rush and uh, jumping through and even off the point as well. I think defensively is something I, I think we're every day we're uh, I think you see improvements in his game, stick positioning, positioning as well. Uh, I just think that. You know, I, I like that back end agility and, and, and that offense in the back end is a nice weapon to have and complement some of our forwards. He's been fine, and I think that uh, he's been getting better every day. Filling Johnny Oduya's skates won't be an easy task, but with alternate captain Brent Seabrook by his side most of this preseason, Daly is learning the Blackhawks' way from one of the best in the game. Dales has been awesome. He's, uh, he's a great guy, great player. We, we, we played against him a lot over the years, so it's, uh, it's fun to have him on our side. He can skate, he can move, uh, you know, and I think uh, you'd have to ask him, but I think every day he's getting more comfortable with uh, the way we are around here and the guys and, and certain things like that. He's been awesome, yeah, on and off the ice. You know, he's just a, he's a good person. You know, uh, good things happen to good people like that, and, you know, you got to see that a couple of days ago. Uh, it sounded a long-term deal. That's why, uh, you know, he got those that many years is because he is a good guy, so, on. Uh, you know, except obviously. Obviously, he's a good hockey player, but, you know, he's a good, uh, good teammate, too, so he, he's, he's been great. Covering the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks, Luke Stuckmeyer, Comcast Sportsnet. All right, Luke, thank you very much, and still to come, we will update our top story as Derek Rose goes down with another injury in the first practice of training camp. It's your choice month at Alpamani Ford. This month, we're out to sell more Ford Fusions and Escapes than ever. So listen to this. Right now, you can drive a 2015 Ford Fusion or Escape for only $169 a month. That's right, $169 a month. And we've got hundreds to choose from. And that's not all. This month, you could save up to $82.50 on a new Ford. It's your choice, but this month only at Alpamani Ford in Melrose Park, 25th and North Avenue.
Heavy showroom traffic due to great savings. I need to get a little higher so I can see them all. Right now at Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont, lease a brand new 2015 Toyota Camry SE for only $189 a month. Be sure to see us before you buy. Bob Rorman. Bob Rorman's Oak Brook Toyota in Westmont. Only five minutes west of the Tri-State on Ogden Avenue. For Bears Buzz, visit CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Max Madsen Mitsubishi. Back to our top story. Derek Rose suffering a fracture of his left orbital bone when he was hit by an elbow during this morning's first practice. Rose will have to undergo a surgical procedure tomorrow. At that point, the Bulls are expected to provide a timetable for his return to the court. Now back to the Cubs. Theo Epstein talked about playing meaningful games in September and October when he was hired as team president four years ago. But it's also special playing in front of emotion-charged sellout crowds at Wrigley Field just about every game. Joe Madden says the atmosphere in the old ballpark is unlike anything he's experienced in baseball, especially in the heat of a playoff race. So the players have lived up to the hype for you. What about the ballpark, the atmosphere? Because I've seen it throughout the season. It seems like every homestand goes up a little bit, and, and it can go further than what it is now, too. I can't even imagine that. Um, I mean, for me personally, this is like, uh, it's pretty incredible. I've, I've been in some good baseball situations. Um, I've been some, through some significant moments, World Series, All-Star Games, uh, playoff, playoff uh, wins, and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, the atmosphere on a nightly basis, for me, is unparalleled. I've been, um, you know, you talk about New York and Boston and playoff situations and other big market areas. Um, I'm, I'm eager. I'm eager to find out or feel what it's like to be in a playoff game here at, at, at Wrigley because even when it's not a playoff situation, it kind of feels that way. One more quick one for you. We can hear the construction outside the ballpark if you're here early enough. Have you given them any idea of what you would like the manager's office to look like next season? I mean, that's a big hole they opulent, have outside opulent the park. Opulent with columns <laughs> and all kinds of uh, refrigeration and wine racks and um, stereo systems. I have not said a word. Bubble hockey? You don't, you don't want bubble hockey or anything? I, There's not, not one request you have? No. No, listen, I, 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 I don't. I, I need good sound when I walk in. I need, uh, I need to put my stereo on. I need good sound and good sound and a, and a wine rack and a W flag flying in the outfield I like that too beautiful he'll need some cages for all those exotic animals he likes to bring to the ballpark as well well the Cubs and Reds are currently in a rain delay in Cincinnati we will get you the latest information from the Great American Ballpark with Len Casper and Jim Deshays after this break thank you for watching Sportsnet Central presented by Comcast Business don't forget the Chicago Sports News anytime just go to our website csnchicago.com we're hoping to have baseball Cubs and Reds later tonight on Comcast Sportsnet Great time for a shiny floor wax, no? Not if you just put the finishing touches on your latest masterpiece. Timing's important. Comcast Business knows that. That's why you can schedule an installation at a time that works for you, even late at night or on the weekend if that's what you need, because you have enough to worry about. I did not see that coming. Don't deal with disruptions. Get better internet installed on your schedule. Comcast Business, built for business. A few years ago, I won $1,000 a week for life, and I got myself a suit. Morning. Morning. Because when you're collecting 1000 bucks every single week, you can never be too careful. I'm good. And this baby has saved me more than a few times. Okay. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> Win up to $5,000 a week with cash for life. The longer you live, the more you get. How much money do you have in your pocket right now? I have $40. 21 Could something that small make an impact on something as big as your retirement? I don't think uh, so. Well, if you start putting that money towards your retirement every week and let it grow over time for 20, 30 years, that retirement challenge might not seem so big after all. Prudential, bring your challenges. 
Looking sharp, Len. Who's the lucky lady? I'm going to the bank to discuss a mortgage. <sighs> See, you need a loan, you put on a suit, you go crawling to the bank. This is how I dress to get a mortgage. <laughs> I just go to Lending Tree. I calculate how much home I can afford. I get multiple offers to compare side by side. And the best part is, the banks come crawling to me. Everything you need to get a better mortgage. Clothing optional. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. Okay. Awkward. Oh my! I can fly! And I can save you money like never before at Bob Rubber and Arlington Nissan. This month, the deals are soaring. Lease a brand new 2015 Nissan Altima for just $129 a month. That's right, just $129 a month. Be sure to see us before you buy. Bob Rorman. Bob Rorman's Arlington Nissan, just east of Route 53 on Dundee Road. State Championships. Welcome back to Cincinnati. Uh, we were trying to get this one started about 50 minutes ago, but under a, a rain delay, not raining uh, very hard at the moment. They will uh, reconvene uh, within the next half hour, and we hope to have a more specific update coming up. But for now, we just wait. It'll be Dan Heron, the veteran right-hander for the Cubs, rookie right-hander Josh Smith scheduled to pitch for the Reds. Cardinals and Pirates already uh, rained out. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow in Pittsburgh. Coming up next, a piece of the game. Piece of the game coming up during our rain delay coverage. Cubs and Reds hopefully a little later. How the heck did you get Jesse Owens golf clubs? I have in my hands Jim Craig's 1980 Olympic gold medal. This is the 1984 Olympic torch carried by Caitlyn Jenner back when she was known as Bruce Jenner. So uh, if I pull six grand out of my pocket, you're going to sell me both jerseys? No, if you pull eight out, I will. <laughs> <laughs> we believe it's the 1859 team. 1859. Flip the light on it. Whoa, I startled. I see the eye just stared at me. It just caught me off guard. It was funny. Most true sports fans have something they cherish from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. A piece of the game where we take the show on the road and anyone can walk in with their sports treasures, big or small. You want the real price on what those memories are worth? Our independent experts, some of the best in the business, are here and asking, what do you got? We're back at Buffalo Wild Wings. The place is rocking. Hi, I'm David Kaplan, and we want to know, what do you got? This is the 1984 Olympic torch carried by Caitlyn Jenner back when she was known as Bruce Jenner. The person who brought in Bruce at the time to run the leg of the race and organized it, set it all up. After he was done, he asked for the torch. Bruce gave it to him, and he's held on to it until now. Of course, with the uh, news about Caitlyn and the transformation, that this is the perfect time to sell something like this. You know, a year ago, this was maybe worth $1,000. He was a celebrity at the time, but now he's become even more than that. Hey, what do you got? I have a 30 by 40 Cal Ripken Jr. signed canvas. When Cal saw it, he was asked me first where I wanted him to sign. Originally, I thought about under the 2131 where the consecutive game streak was broken, but I thought there wasn't enough room, so I asked him, and he kind of went over it, decided that'd be the best spot, and then put a signature down on the canvas. Cal said it's the biggest signature he's ever signed on a canvas. He actually took his phone out and took a picture of it for his own collection. Did Cal want to buy it? No, Cal did not want to buy this. Well, he didn't offer. Hey, what do you got? I have a one-of-a-kind uh, poster board for my bar mitzvah party. That's me and Walter Payton. Oh, Walter uh, thought I was asking too many questions, I think, so he put the hand over my face and uh, spent so much time talking to me, and he gave me an autographed football. Uh, my mom made this, and as soon as I became a, a big boy, she said, you got to take it out of the house. And so it's been in the basement and uh, it's in the man cave. I'm speechless and he's sweetness. Perhaps no 
famous player in the history of American professional sports was a bigger fan of his former team than the late, great, good old number 10 of the Chicago Cubs, Ron Santo. Ron Cardo was one of the guys that worked as a bat boy over at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Ronnie and the Cubs used to come up to play the Milwaukee Braves, and you two struck up a friendship, didn't you? Uh, great friendship. Uh, Ron was like a big brother to me. When I was a bat boy, what I always wanted to do is try to get uh, all my chores done early, and what I wanted to do is get out on the field for batting practice. The field and grounders. I'd, I'd, you're right. I'd go between third base and shortstop and field grounders, and Ron Santo would come out and always give me tips, help me out. At one point in time, he came out and said, uh, I want to see you hit. We had a session out there for about 20 or 30 minutes. He pitched batting practice to me. This is before a game that they're playing. And uh, I thought that was quite unusual. Yeah, I had an opportunity to really meet a lot of ball players over the years, working in the visitors' clubhouse for four years. Ron Santo was without a doubt number one in, with me. How do you end up with a game used Ron Santo glove? Most ball players will come in with two or three gloves, and he was breaking in a new glove and uh, just took and threw me the old one and said, Here, you can have this. It means a lot to me. A lot and, of memories uh, right there. You bet. You, great memories. All right, how about we bring out an evaluator who's very well versed in Ron Santo gloves? He looks at it and goes, Hey, Ronnie, I don't know if you know this, but here's what it's worth. I would like that. Yeah, I'd like to find out. All right, let's do it. Ron Santo never gave up. He battled diabetes and to be elected to baseball's Hall of Fame. Diabetes took both his lower legs. But Santo helped raise more than $65 million to find a cure. He was snubbed again and again by the Hall. But in 2012, after he passed, Santo finally found his way to Cooperstown. All right, Ron Cardo, say hi to Rob Steinmetz. Pleasure. He's our lead Pleasure evaluator. Nice to, to meet you. You are a big-time Cubs collector, and you know a lot of them in the industry. This is pretty rare. It's uh, That's the understatement of the year. This is uh, about as rare as it gets in terms of game-used equipment. Uh, fielder's gloves, you know, back in those days, a guy would wear one for two, maybe three years. So there's fewer of them out there in the hobby as opposed to bats and jerseys. Uh, what I love about it, being a Cubs collector, is one of the first things I noticed was the Santo name that's written on it is actually written in Yosh Kawano's hands, who was the equipment manager at the time. You're right. And Yosh would do that for everybody. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yosh so that, marked everything. He did. <laughs> yes, he did. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, I mean, it's pristine. It's exactly what you would expect to see from a game-used glove. I have not seen a Ron Santo glove sold in an auction setting in probably 15 years. Um, the last one that sold went for right around $3,000, but that was over a decade ago. Um, being conservative, if I were placing an au auction estimate on this glove, I would say five to $7,000 in today's market. Could go for more. Somebody walked up to you and said, seven grand, there you go, Ron, I'm taking the glove home. What do you say? It's gonna be hard to give up. Mm -hmm. 10 grand. We're going up here, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ron Santo was outstanding. That's all I could say. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. When teams came into town, whether they were the Cubs or the Pirates, I was their bat boy, and I wanted them to win. Up in the clubhouse after the game, it's a lot easier when they win than when they lose, believe me. Hey, what do you got? I have in my hands Jim Craig's 1980 Olympic gold medal from the Miracle on Ice game. You believe in miracles? The Russian jersey, Finland jersey from the gold medal game, and most importantly, the flag that he wore on his shoulders after he won the medal. Security was a major concern for Jim. I mean, this was sitting in a closet in his house. We've been entrusted to sell it for Jim Craig for one price, $5.7 million. What if I offered $5.6 million? I would be on the phone with Jim tomorrow, and we would find out. Hey, what do you got? I've got the five Green Bay Packer yearbooks in the five years that Vince Lombardi coached them to championships. I've been collecting yearbooks and media guides uh, pretty much all my life, about 40 years now. My favorite is the 1961. Uh, Forrest Gregg on the cover kind of symbolizes what football was like in the old days. Uh, the mud and the guts, all oh, the mystique's always there. 
Hey, what do you got? I got my Chief Wahoo bobblehead here. It's about three feet tall. Just started thinking it'd be cool to get all my favorite Indians of all time to sign it. I just got to add Manny Ramirez here today, so oh, he was excited to see it. You know, he, he was willing to you know, take a good picture with it. I'm the biggest Indians fan. Well, yesterday when I walked into my hotel, put the light on, whoa, and I startled. I see the eye just stared at me. It just caught me off guard. It was funny. Owens, one of the great iconic athletes in the history of American sports who could forget his thrilling performance in the Olympics back in the 30s in front of Adolf Hitler. Dan Leonard comes to us from the suburbs of Chicago, Evanston, Illinois. Okay, we've had Jesse Owens gold medal on wow. this show, but I didn't know Jesse Owens played golf. Jesse was oh, a golfer. How the heck did you get Jesse Owens Golf Club. My grandfather was good friends with Jesse. They met in the 1960s here in Chicago and then both moved to Phoenix, not together, in the early 70s, and they formed a business together. So they would hit the fairways after work, and when Jesse passed away in 1980, his wife, Ruth, gave the clubs to my grandfather, who then gave them to me 2011, the year he died pretty famous thing right here. What do you do with it? When I got the clubs, I said, listen, I need to find a sign here, something. And so I went through the pockets, and there was junk in there. There were uh, tees, and there was, uh, you know, like a lousy divot repair tool that said American Express on it. And there were about 750 golf balls in there. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm going through these, I find two of these. And it says Jesse Owens on it. It's a monogram Jesse golf ball. And I said, my gosh. It's legit. And so they played enough that when Jesse passed, these went to your grandfather, and now they're yours. That's right. And I was a golf professional at uh, North Shore Suburb here in Chicago for a number of years. And so my grandfather said, out of all the family members, who would respect these the most? And that me. would be you. Yes, sir. Are you looking to find out what they're worth, and maybe I'll sell them, or? No, nah, I'm going to keep them. Well, Cap, I'm, that's kind of what I'm here for. Um, I, I, I feel myself talking about the clubs and my grandfather right now. It, it makes me sort of want to hold on to them. But, you know, I mean, I'm also a smart guy, too. And so Correct. if there's a number out there, I would certainly want to listen to it. Well, how about we bring somebody out who can look at these and tell you what Jesse Owens golf clubs are worth? Sounds great. All right, let's do it. Jesse Owens won four gold medals at the 1936 Olympics, upstaging Hitler in one of the greatest moments in sports. But it may not have been Owen's best performance. One year earlier, Owen set three world records and tied another in less than one hour while competing for Ohio State. It's still called the greatest 45 minutes in sports. All right, Amanda Peacock, this is Dan Leonard. He has Jesse Owens Golf Clubs. Amanda is the curator of collections at the Babe Ruth Museum. Terrific. Knows her sports memorabilia. What do we got? I know, we're talking iconic athlete, iconic event. Um, and this is, you know, something of a side you maybe don't know about Jesse Owens. I, don't, I didn't realize he was a golfer. It's a neat interesting kind of piece that goes along kind of a, a human side of such an iconic American athlete. All right, now the provenance obviously is impeccable because his grandfather was given the clubs by Jesse's wife. Right. So we know they're authentic. But what is something like this worth? So we know they're authentic, but if you're someone coming in, maybe a collector who doesn't know the story, a lot of athletes tend to have their golf bags uh, monogrammed. And you do have the ball that has Jesse Owens on it, so that gives us another bit of it. Um, you know, these clubs have some serial numbers on them, so if you did a little bit of research and kind of matched up the serial numbers, if there's any information out there, um, that's going to change you know, the evaluation you give. I'd say as is, we're probably looking around two, three thousand dollars wow. for the set. Two or three grand's a nice piece of change. It's a big number. Yeah. It is. But it's your grandfather, it's Jesse Owens. That's why I just said my own head cap, said the exact same thing. Thinking about these clubs and the history my grandfather had with Jesse, right now I, I don't think I could put a number to quantify that with. It would have to be a number you went. Really? Right. Rock your like, jaw. On yeah. the floor, <laughs> kind of I can remember. use that. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for being here. Thanks, David. You Appreciate got it. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks a lot, Amanda. Thanks for having me. You think Jesse ever played with that ball that had his name on it? There's no question Jesse played with that ball. When I was digging through the pockets of the golf bag, that's what gave it away. That's what tipped it. It's monogrammed right there. Jesse Owens and Champion Sales, which is the company he co-owned with my grandfather. A stunning find. A baseball card that goes back to the Civil War days. What's it worth? Next.
of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Hey, Mom. Yeah? We've got Allstate, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Well, I found this new thing called... Allstate Quick Photo Claim. It's an app. You understand that? Just take photos of the damage with your phone and upload them to Allstate. Really? So you get a quicker estimate, quicker payment, quicker back to normal. I just did it. But maybe you can find an app that will help you explain this to your father. Introducing Quick Photo Claim. Just another way Allstate is changing car insurance for good. Nothing I can't reach in my Subaru. The 2015 Subaru Outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select 2015 Sierra Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. What's in the trunk this month? Our friends at Heritage Auctions, HA.com, have some amazing items, spectacular sports treasures they bring to us and are putting up for sale. We're here at the beautiful Omni Chicago Hotel on the Mag Mile of Michigan Avenue, downtown Chicago, a great place to stay if you're visiting the Windy City. And we welcome back my man Chris Ivey, Heritage Auctions. All right, you're always fun to talk to because you bring this great trunk full of stuff. What did you bring us this time? This is a fresh discovery and a one of a kind. And the first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings. And the earliest baseball card of them is 1869 Peckett Snyder. And this baseball card of the Brooklyn Atlantics predates that by nine to 10 years. Wow. We believe it's the 1859 team. 1859. How good is the provenance on it? And this comes directly from a family member of a player on this team, the great, great niece of Archibald McMahon. And he's one of the guys pictured in that team right there. Archibald McMahon was a member of the Atlantic Nine, pictured here. And what's really interesting about that is Archibald McMahon's brother, John McMahon, was a war hero from the Civil War. He passed away at 92 years old in 1928. And in his obituary in the newspaper that comes with this item, uh, it talks about the fact that he kept a ba uh, baseball picture of his brother Archibald. Which this is the baseball picture. And this picture. is it. That's what's talked about in his obituary. Unbelievable. I'm just blown away by the quality of the photo, of the card. It looks just like it was done back in that era and then preserved perfectly. They were obviously proud of it. You know, they kept it in their family for generations. There's collectors out there that this would be right up their alley. How much? A similar card of the Brooklyn Atlantic sold at auction last year for nearly $100,000. Uh, this one, we're estimating conservatively at $50,000 plus. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it go into six figures. Thanks a lot, my man. Appreciate it. That's my guy, Chris Ivey. Go to their website, HA.com. Heritage Auctions, it's HA.com. Not only that card, you won't believe some of the amazing items they have up for bid. Why two of basketball's greatest players gave this guy the jerseys off their backs. Next. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer. 
with over $1 billion in annual sales across 38 collectible categories. Whether you're an experienced collector hunting for that elusive item or a novice considering the sale of a valuable family heirloom, put the expertise and market strength of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Visit us today at HA.com to find out for yourself why Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. The Honda for You sales event is happening now and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Honda Accord. The Accord is the best-selling midsize car in America, which makes sense because it's also the best value. And the Accord is loaded with standard features. So hurry into your Honda dealer today, and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Accord during the Honda For You sales event. Add an elegant masonry appearance to your exterior walls with Novick Vinyl Siding Panels from Menards. It's easy to install and available in six colors. Stacked stone panels are just $2.99 per square foot. Menards is your residential steel roofing headquarters. A new roof is all about choices. Make a lasting energy-saving choice with residential steel roofing. It's environmentally friendly and offers investment-grade protection. 16-inch hidden fastener panels are only $1.75 a linear foot. Save big money at Menards. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. I'm your tailgate grill. Your buddy was in such a rush to get into the game, he didn't quite put me out. I see you bought the industrial-sized bottle of lighter fluid. Smart. And if you got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get an Allstate agent and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? What do you got? Hi, I have uh, three hockey sticks, two CCM, one North one, uh, autographed by uh, Blackhawks from uh, mid-1960s, autographed by uh, Hall of Famers Pierre Blatt, Bobby Hull, Stan Makita. This is actual Bobby Hull's actual stick. Also have some yearbook programs from the 65-66 season, autographed four Hall of Famers, Glenn Hall, Palat, Bobby Hall, Stan Makita. Hey, what do you got? Hi, everyone. I'm Tony Byatt from Willowick, Ohio. My item is a 1973 memorial patch worn by the Pittsburgh Pirates during the 1973 baseball season after Roberto Clemente died in a plane crash carrying relief supplies to Nicaragua. So tell me, what's it worth? Hey, what do you got? I welcome you here to my Cubs Museum and I'd like to show you the most unique piece of memorabilia that I own. A number from the Wrigley Field scoreboard. Number 10, Ron Sano. Ron Sato autographed and Billy Williams, Ryan Sandberg, Ernie Banks, Fergie Jenkins, and Andre Dawson. Go Cubs! We're looking for more great stories and more great sports memorabilia. So go to our website, apieceinthegame.tv. Send us a brief description, a photo, and tell us, what do you got? If they had a Hall of Fame for official scores, our next guest would be the first guy inducted. He's the only man to be the official scorer for the Cubs, the White Sox, the Bulls, the Bears, the Blackhawks, and many other teams that have come around the Chicago sports landscape. Bob Rosenberg joins us now. You have worked some of the greatest games in Chicago sports history. You've worked all these great teams. What, what are some of your fondest memories? Well, when the Bulls won the championships, you know, I was able to be one of the lucky ones to get a ring each year. And there ain't too many people that could say that, no. including you. Yeah, including me, absolutely. <laughs> I get to cover those things. <laughs> I didn't get to do what you did. And you got to know Michael Jordan and all of these great Chicago history, iconic athletes. Well, Michael, I used to do his scrapbook for him personally. So what was that like? It was a job. I mean, 
every day there was something, you know, in the papers about him. And he took care of me pretty good. All right, so you brought a couple of pieces from your collection here. Signed jersey, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Jerry Reinsdorf, does he know you got these things? Tell him to ask Scottie Pippen who I got that from and Dennis Rodman, who I got this from. Rodman's was the year they won 72 and lost 10, 95, 96. Right. What was it like being with Dennis Rodman? Dennis was a great guy. Dennis would give you the shirt off his back. That's why he was broke. He'd give away everything. I mean, this is authentic. This is the real deal from the guy. Have you ever had him appraised? No. How about I bring somebody out here who tells you just what you got here? That's fine. Right, let's do it. What are the three best NBA teams in history? Here's how ESPN ranked them. Number three, the 1986-87 Los Angeles Lakers. Number two, the 85-86 Boston Celtics with Larry Bird. And number one, drum roll please, the 1995-96 Chicago Bulls with Pippen, Rodman, and some guy named Jordan. Will he sell? Next. Hey. Hey, Steve. I was going to order pizza and watch the game. You in? You're going to order pizza to your home? Yeah. Well, do these pizza people bring you rounds of beers, walls of television? Scott, talk to me. Oh, I will. Thanks a lot. The jerseys, sentimental value over the years, or you just have so much that it's... I, I got so much that I think it's time to put the money in the bank if I can. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select 2015 Sierra Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Menards is your roofing headquarters. EPDM Rubber Roofing is on sale. It has a synthetic waterproof rubber membrane that's ideal for flat and low-sloped roofs with a 10-year warranty. A 10 by 20-foot roll is $99. Larger sizes are also on sale. Update your roof with Owens Corning Shingles. These classic traditional three-tab shingles come with a 60-mile-per-hour wind warranty. Available in three colors, they're only $14.99 a bundle. Save big money at Menards. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. Thanks so much for joining us and a huge thanks to our great sponsor at Allstate, the Good Hands People. Remember, go to our website, apieceofthegame.tv, and tell us, what do you got? We got a picture of uh, my daughter with a Barry Sanders sign at the Silverdome. We got a pretty good sized family, so when he saw us, he just kind of smiled. Uh, NFL Hall of Fame helmet. You can follow us at apieceofthegame.tv. Drop us a line and tell us, what do you got? Guests of A Piece of the Game stay at the beautiful Omni Chicago Hotel, located in the heart of the city on Michigan Avenue. A Piece of the Game, winner of two Emmy Awards, sponsored by Allstate. The Good Hands People. We continue to wait through a rain delay uh, in Cincinnati. The Reds now have had 18 weather delays uh, this season here at Great American Ballpark, lasting about 26 hours total. We've been waiting for about an hour and a half. It has not rained very hard, but they continue to wait on another cell. They expect to be coming through the area, and we have not gotten any sort of definitive update other than we will uh, give you another update in about 30 minutes. Coming up next, a piece of the game as a rain delay coverage continues. Cubs and Reds hopefully coming up from Cincinnati. This is actually Coach Mike Ditka's playbook from the 1986 Super Bowl 20. Alex Rodriguez's 3,000 hit 
which was a home run at Yankee Stadium a few weeks ago. When he threw that ball, it was a, it was a perfect spiral. And that's probably the best catch I ever made in my life. Hmm. I heard that Tommy let you hold his gold gloves. <laughs> I will be there in 15 minutes. 2,500 or so. Do we make a good deal or do we get ripped off? Most true sports fans have something they cherish, from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. A piece of the game, where we take the show on the road and anyone can walk in with their sports treasures, big or small. You want the real price on what those memories are worth? Our independent experts, some of the best in the business, are here and asking, what do you got? We're back at Buffalo Wild Wings. The place is rocking. Hi, I'm David Kaplan, and we want to know, what do you got? I have a few baseballs here. None of them, however, are worth more than this one. Alex Rodriguez's 3,000th hit, which was a home run at Yankee Stadium a few weeks ago. As soon as he connected, the ball was going up in the air. I knew it was gone, reached up, barely missed the ball, but the ball just appeared on the step where I was standing. It was pretty much touching my right sneaker. Should I give it back to the Yankees? They could be pretty convincing. It's fun to think about how much it could be worth, but I have no idea, so you tell me. Hey, what do you got? I used to go to the autograph show and sit with the athlete when he signed autographs, and I was lucky enough to sit with Eddie Matthews one weekend. Eddie liked to drink his bug juice, so he turned to me and said, do you mind if I start drinking my bug juice? And I said, well, as long as you keep signing the autographs, I, I guess it'd be okay. When it was all said and done, he went into his briefcase and he pulled out four of these different photographs and then he autographed them for me. But I have to give the guy credit because I've had a couple of beers myself. His autograph never missed a heartbeat. Hey, what do you got? Well, I got a foul ball here that I caught at Wrigley that happened to take the nation by storm, I guess. Well, me and Isaac here, we're sitting on the um, first baseline and Jason Hamill hit a pop fly and I stood up and caught the ball over Adrian Gonzalez Smith. We made uh, eye contact later in the game and uh, I gave him a thumbs up and he kind of just shook his head and went back to the play. You had a good grip on that baby the whole time. Oh yeah, I like to think so. The 1969 New York Mets came out of nowhere, roared by the Chicago Cubs like a freight train. The amazing Mets went on to win the World Series. Maxine Agee's late husband, Tommy Agee, played on that team. He's won two gold gloves in his career. You bring us one of them from 1966 when he won the gold glove and rookie of the year as a member of the Chicago White Sox. Yes. But that whole Mets thing, drives people in Chicago <laughs> crazy. It still does, doesn't it? It still does. It was a wonderful, wonderful series. Yeah, it absolutely was for you people <laughs> for in New us. York. You have his two gold gloves. Yes. Have you always had his two gold gloves? No, I've not always had his two gold gloves because Tommy was such a giving person. And he was good with his friends because if they asked him for anything, he would share whatever he had. So what, somebody asked him for and his gold gloves? Yes. Someone asked if they could hold his gold gloves, both for the American League and the National League, and Tommy said, sure. When he told me that's what he had done, I said, oh, no, you did not do that. Are you serious? Told me who he gave them to. I immediately called them up. I said, hmm, I heard that Tommy let you hold his gold gloves. <laughs> I will be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> now they're safe with you. Very safe. Okay, where do you keep it? I keep them in my home. One is on a bookcase and one is on my desk. The New York Mets asked if they could borrow the other one, the one from 1970. So they show it at City Field. So they show it in their museum. They borrowed it and will return it after the season is over. All right, have you ever had someone come through and look at these and go, Maxine, do you have any idea what this stuff is worth? Uh, actually, I've not. Well, how about I bring purpose? an expert out here and they take a look? I'd appreciate that. All right, That'd let's do very it. Very nice. Tommy Agee had the greatest game by a center fielder in World Series history, according to Sports Illustrated. In Game 3 of the 69 series, Agee homered off Baltimore's Jim Palmer to lead off the game. Then, Agee made not one, but two remarkable catches, saving five runs, and maybe the series for the amazing Mets. All right, Maxine, this is Rob Steinmetz. He's our Hello. lead evaluator. So Maxine Agee's husband, 
wins two gold gloves. She brought one of the gold gloves here. Awesome. You know, I get to evaluate a lot of stuff on this show. It's always an honor for me to have the opportunity to meet folks like you. What an honor. This is a phenomenal piece, you know, for high-end sports memorabilia collectors, personal trophies and awards that players won and owned personally, it, it doesn't get any better. I mean, Hall of Fame, um, gold gloves, MVP awards, Cy Young awards can sell for six figures. Um, this particular glove um, in an auction setting, I would not be surprised to see it fetch $15,000 or more. The other glove from his time with the Mets, um, the Mets have a huge collector following. I would expect that glove to go for twenty to twenty-five thousand. Yeah. So between the two, you know, forty thousand dollars or more for the two gold gloves. So it's a good thing you got them back. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thank you for coming to us from New York. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You still see a lot of the old Mets? Oh yes. Uh, several of them participate in our golf outing. We have a foundation in Tommy's name to support heart disease and breast cancer. So. Uh, Art Shamsky at Crane Pool. Cleon Jones comes up. The 50th reunion is coming up, so we're all getting really excited about that. So, Maxine, how's your golf game? Uh, I have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you got? Walter Payton's last touchdown football in the south end zone. I could see his eyes. He's looking up in the stands. And when he threw that ball, it was, a, it was a perfect spiral. I jumped up about three foot above the seat in front of me and picked it up out of the air, landed about four rows in front of me on the concrete, shoved it in my car hearts, got up, zipped it up, went back to my seat. That's probably the best catch I ever made in my life. Hey, what do you got? I'm Bob Surratt, and this is a Ron Santo jersey from 1971. Best part of all, I do believe these could be tobacco stains and the great cubby patch, of course, that they wore in those days. I think I went to my first game when I was about nine or ten years old with my dad. We used to sneak down to the first row, and then we'd have, like, candy bars or what have you, hot dogs, and we'd hold them over the dugout, and a hand would come up and grab them, and usually it was Santos. Sullivan from Boston, Massachusetts comes to us with a very interesting item. I think of field goals ending Super Bowls. Jim O'Brien wins one for the Colts. Scott Norwood wide right for Buffalo. Adam Vinatieri gets a game-winning field goal in Super Bowl 38. So you have the shoes that he wore when he kicked the field goal that wins the Super Bowl. So the Patriots won it in 01, 03, and 04. This is the 03 Super Bowl and he actually hit that Go ahead, field goal with there were four seconds left. So that really kicked off the dynasty, if you will, no pun intended. And that was the also Patriots. the Super Bowl of wardrobe malfunction, right. Janet Just Jackson and, and Justin, Justin Timberlake. Timberlake. Right. How do you get your hands on these shoes? I'm the handler for these. Basically, they're owned by a company called New England Picture out of New Hampshire. And they worked very directly with Adam Vinatieri's charity pursuits. And so he offered them to them in exchange for a charitable donation. Uh, and so they ended up making that donation and acquire the shoes that way. He signed it, it's notarized, so right. the provenance is phenomenal. Sure, and these actually have been living at the hall at Patriot Place, which is essentially the Patriots Museum, right at Gillette Stadium. So. You know, it's funny, you can barely fit your hand in it. They're so small. They're yeah, it's seven amazing how little these things are. Yeah. My kids could wear these. I know. What size the are size these? The size of your hand, they're seven and a half. But, I mean, you know, the, the, the sad thing was seeing Vinatieri go to the Colts, who, you know, the Patriots have a bit of a rivalry with, too. How about we bring somebody out here who can authenticate these again and tell you what they're worth? Sure. Sound awesome. good? Let's do it. Tom Brady was the MVP, but Adam Vinatieri's foot won the Super Bowl against Carolina. The game was tied. Just four seconds on the clock, and Vinatieri lined up for a 41-yard field goal attempt. It was no sure thing. He'd already missed one field goal and had another blocked. This time, it was good. And he's still kicking the NFL's oldest player at age 42. All right, Dan Sullivan, meet Amanda Peacock. She is curator of collections at the Babe Ruth Museum. She's an expert in memorabilia. So Dan comes to us. He's the handler for these cleats. What is your take on these shoes and their value? All right, we do have a great find here. I mean, we have the authentic Adam Vinatieri's cleats. We have two pieces of information saying these are the cleats. They're just kind Hold of an all. They've even got 
little bits of turf still left in the right, cleats. Right, you can Somebody even see when it. they were used. They've been preserved phenomenally. And see, that's part of how, good job, how they were handled, the fact that they were on display at a museum, um, as well as the, you know, it looked like they walked off the field yesterday kind of thing. What type of value are we looking at? It's hard to put a value on these because they're a first, last, and only. Um, some other Super Bowl items we've had, uh, rings tend to go at about $50,000. You have uh, some actually Patriots Super Bowl game used footballs have gone for maybe four or five. But for this, you know, if these were going up for auction, again, it's really hard to ballpark. I'd say a safe low ball bet could be maybe thirty to fifty thousand dollars. But it's really depending on who's going for them. Who, you know, a diehard Patriots fan who maybe has met Adam Vinatieri in the past, maybe his favorite player. You know, they could go for more than we could even imagine. It's good to know what the what the value that we'd be looking at. Right. So you're looking at being able to bring some serious money back in. And that auction will sure. be coming up down the road. Yeah, uh, sometime in the fall. Usually sometime probably the around fall. the time of uh, start of the football season. Start of the football season. Well, great. Thank you for evaluating. Thank you for bringing such a cool item in. Thanks for having me. So tell me why there are different cleats on each shoe. Yeah, on the, on the left-handed plant foot, they've actually got screw-in cleats, and on the right foot, it's molded. So it's, a, it's definitely an interesting difference. And you can still see the turf in it. The biggest Super Bowl ring ever made. What player wore it and what it's worth next. of the game sponsored by Allstate are you in good hands remember when you said men are superior drivers yeah yeah then how'd I get this Allstate safe driving bonus check Is that? so weird right my agent Tom said only Allstate sends you a bonus check for every six months you're accident free but I'm a woman maybe it's a misprint does it look like a misprint okay, let's try. Uh -uh. silence Ask an Allstate agent about the safe driving bonus check. Are you in good hands? Thought it'd be bigger. There's nothing I can't reach in my Subaru. The 2015 Subaru Outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select 2015 Sierra Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. We're bringing the trunk back. Heritage Auctions has packed it with some stunning sports treasures that are about to hit the auction block. We're here at the beautiful Chicago Omni Hotel on Michigan Avenue, where they take great care of all of our guests we fly in, including my man, Chris Ivey, Heritage Auctions. Good to have you back. Glad to be here. All right, so we got the trunk back. You always have the coolest stuff. What did you bring this month? We have a couple Chicago-related Super Bowl items. Right up my alley. So this first one is uh, is a one-of-a-kind piece. You can see right here on the sticker. Uh, I see the name in the sticker, Coach Ditka. Coach Ditka, and this is actually Coach Mike Ditka's playbook from the 1986 Super Bowl 20, the Bears versus the Patriots. You gotta be kidding me. This is our, his notes that he, uh, he used in the locker room. You are the Bears, Central Division champions. You earned it, don't let anybody take it away. Show the nation that we are for real and we must be reckoned with. Second half team. They certainly wore that day. Absolutely. They had a great game. 46 to 10, they win. And then you get to the uh, 
the real guts of the playbook, which is obviously the plays. This is all just handwritten. Yeah. Here's the play. Some of those are Walter Payton's plays that they ran. As I like to say, it's old school. That is one of the coolest things because it's a one of a kind. This is the playbook that was in Coach Ditka's hand as they were winning their Super Bowl. What else do you have? This one is also a one of a kind. It's the largest Super Bowl ring that's ever been made. And this one was presented to... It's gotta be William Perry, the refrigerator. You nailed it, absolutely. William Refrigerator Perry. This is the largest ring that Jostin's ever made, and it is amazing just how large it is. You got three fingers in there. Yeah, yeah, there's not a sizing instrument to size it. It's estimated to be size 25. And this ring, uh, you know, it's got, you know, Perry's name on the side. It's got a lot of stats, the Super Bowl score, obviously. And uh, this Chicago Bears team is arguably the greatest football team of all time. It's certainly it's... the greatest defense of all time. Yeah. Okay, so you put these two pieces up for auction. What does the Super Bowl ring go for? Our estimate on this one's 40,000 plus. We wouldn't be surprised to see it go well beyond that, though. The playbook, to me, is the coolest thing. What's that gonna go for? Our estimate on that's 10,000 plus. I, I gotta think that goes for more than that. Yeah, he's a legend here in Chicago, obviously, and nationwide. All right, thank you for being here. My pleasure. If you'd like to bid on these items or some other really cool items, go to HA for Heritage Auctions, HA.com. They're gonna have a Chicago Platinum Night. Check out their website. You won't believe some of the things that you can bid on next cap's favorite personal sports treasure who gave it to him and why even cap doesn't know what it's worth heritage auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer with over 1 billion dollars in annual sales across 38 collectible categories whether you're an experienced collector hunting for that elusive item or a novice considering the sale of a valuable family heirloom. Put the expertise and market strength of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Visit us today at HA.com to find out for yourself why Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. The Honda For You sales event is happening now, and you could get a great deal on a 2015 Honda Accord. The Accord is the best-selling midsize car in America, which makes sense because it's also the best value. And the Accord is loaded with standard features. So hurry into your Honda dealer today, and you could get a great deal in a 2015 Accord during the Honda For You sales event. Add an elegant masonry appearance to your exterior walls with Novick Vinyl Siding Panels from Menards. It's easy to install and available in six colors. Stacked stone panels are just $2.99 per square foot. Menards is your residential steel roofing headquarters. A new roof is all about choices. Make a lasting energy-saving choice with residential steel roofing. It's environmentally friendly and offers investment-grade protection. 16-inch hidden fastener panels are only $1.75 a linear foot. Save big money at Menards. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. Dad, like how many more weeks are you going to be using my car? Until my insurance claim goes through, this is our car. Mr. Parker, my parents have... Allstate. They have this... Claim satisfaction guarantee. Really? Their claim experience is... It's fast, fair, and hassle-free. Or they get their, like, money back. Sarah! Come to bro with me! Um, no. Hey, Mr. Parker. Claim satisfaction guarantee. Just another way Allstate is changing car insurance for good. What do you got? I have a couple baseballs here, dated March 17th, 1925. My grandfather knew someone that worked at Brick Stadium and actually took him down after a game and had this ball signed by Ty Cobb. I also have another ball that is signed by the Tiger team. This was 
not authenticated, but it is the full team of the Tigers uh, at that time. Hey, what do you got? I was going through the bookshelf in my parents' home, and I found this book, and I noticed inside the book that it was autographed by Roger Maris. And as I was leafing through the book, out fell this card, which is an autographed Roger Maris card uh, talking about delicious armor bacon. Hey, what do you got? What I have is a 1966 Green Bay Packers autographed football uh, from Super Bowl One. My mother worked for a restaurant. Uh, the restaurant was frequented by a number of the Packer players, uh, in particular, uh, Max McGee. She had asked Max if she could get an autographed football. Max came back in and presented this ball to my mother. If I would have got my hands on that ball back then, well, well, wait a minute, I'll show you what I would have been doing with it. We're looking for more great stories and more great sports memorabilia. So go to our website, apieceinthegame.tv. Send us a brief description, a photo, and tell us, what do you got? I've been hosting a piece of the game for a long time now, so probably some of you at home go, what does the guy that hosts the show have for memorabilia in his house? I've been blessed. I have some very cool things from my career as a sportscaster. But my favorite athlete of all time, without a doubt, is Secretariat. Yes, horses are athletes. My prized possession, right here. The Time Magazine cover from June 11, 1973, as Secretariat was getting ready to finish off the Triple Crown in record fashion, winning the Belmont Stakes by 31 lengths. The piece that I got, it's a collector's edition, one of only 99, signed by their great jockey, Ronnie Turcott, and the owner, Penny Chenery. So how did I get this piece? My beautiful wife bought it for me as a gift while we were dating. Well, it was your birthday and I wanted to get you something very special, so I did a little research on the internet and found this and thought, this is perfect. So I ordered it, got it, and framed it myself. For me, this is my favorite athlete. Yes, it's always been on our bucket list to go to the Kentucky Derby, and I knew that Secretariat was your favorite athlete, and I wanted to do something special. And now it hangs in our family room and a place of honor where everybody can see it and just know that about you. And with American Pharoah winning the Triple Crown, finally giving us another Triple Crown winner, a firm, the last one, in 78, that heightens awareness for horse racing and maybe ups the value of what you bought me. So how about I bring Rob Steinmetz out here and we'll let you know if you made a great purchase or if we got ripped off. We'll see. It's not just any horse that's box office. And they're off. Secretariat remains the most revered and fastest horse in Triple Crown history. Comparing their times, American Pharaoh, the most recent Triple Crown winner, would have lost to Secretariat by 15 lengths at the Belmont Stakes. Secretariat wins! Yes, in 1973, it seemed wherever you looked, Secretariat was looking back at you. What did Mrs. Cat pay for it? And did she get ripped off? Next. If they make this, I'll eat the blazing wings. <laughs> this is no time for a change of heart, because before contracts were the size of Texas, a man's word meant something. So get back out there and show them what you got. That's going. Grab a seat. The game is on. Bumble the Wild Wings. Wing Spear Sports. Okay, Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. You're going to feel good about the purchase. They're going to stand behind it. The service is beyond what you'd expect. Hello, I'm Dan Fields of the Fields Auto Group. We simply treat people the way we want to be treated. It includes our free loaners, free car washes, and cafes. It's all part of our Fields Matters program. Fields matters because you matter. We're a Fields family, absolutely. And now at Fields, many of Chicago get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months on any new 2015 Mini Countryman model. Fields, many of Chicago, your local Mini dealer in the city of Chicago. So I heard about that new offer from AT&T and DirecTV. 
but they still lock you in to a two-year contract. That could cost you over $2,600, all for temperamental satellite TV service. AT&T and DirecTV, call it a new offer. But it's just the same old thing. Don't fall for AT&T and DirecTV's latest offer. Only Xfinity delivers the fastest internet and the best TV experience with X1. Beat the rush for winter tires to get big savings at Discount Tire. Buy now and get a $50 Visa prepaid card on any set of winter tires purchased with your Discount Tire credit card. Thank you, Discount Tire. Did Cap's wife get taken on this thing? Yes, I know it's different. Not many people admit that their favorite athlete of all time is a horse. She bought this for me with a lot of love. What do we have here? What is it worth? It's it's a great piece, you know. It's it's obviously to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Triple Crown. Interestingly, around the same time this print was done, uh, several pretty significant secretariat pieces were sold at auction. Um, one of his blankets sold for $20,000 the same year this came out. One of his horseshoes sold for $10,000 the year this came out. Those are That's some what I really want. future <laughs> birthday hints, right? right? Okay. Yeah. This is a, a limited edition piece. It's not a one of a kind. So there obviously are 98 other of these out there. Typically speaking, you know, limited edition pieces like this don't really jump in value tremendously over time. This piece, I was able to find some other uh, dealers who had this up for sale in the range of $2,000 to $2,500. Because American Pharoah has brought racing back into, you know, the casual fan's mind, does that help this? Or, eh, it's really not affected? It doesn't hurt it, you know, it doesn't help it. I mean, honestly, Secretariat's popularity was really fueled by the film, you know, and that's why there's, I think, so much interest in Secretariat memorabilia. $2,500 or so, do we make a good deal or do we get ripped off? Well, to you and I, it's worth a million bucks, but we didn't get ripped off. So we made a good deal. We made a good deal. Rob, thanks. Good news, you got thanks, it. Hon. Is it weird that your husband's favorite athlete is a horse? You know David, <laughs> right? <laughs> A pitcher who can paint the corners is known as a Rembrandt. At GMC, we get why people love that kind of precision. After all, in everything we build, that's exactly what we deliver. This is precision. This is GMC. Now pay no interest for five years. Plus get 3,000 purchase cash on select 2015 Sierra Crew Cab SLT models in stock the longest. Menards is your roofing headquarters. EPDM Rubber Roofing is on sale. It has a synthetic waterproof rubber membrane that's ideal for flat and low-sloped roofs with a 10-year warranty. A 10 by 20 foot roll is $99. Larger sizes are also on sale. Update your roof with Owens Corning shingles. These classic traditional three-tab shingles come with a 60 mile per hour wind warranty. Available in three colors, they're only $14.99 a bundle. Save big money at Menards. There's so many details that go into building an asymmetric surfboard. Designing things for myself at first was really an exciting thing. But watching somebody else ride something I made, I mean, that's really where it's at. There are lots of ways, you know, to refresh the world. But in the end, I just want to give people something they can enjoy. Thanks so much for joining us and a huge thanks to our great sponsor at Allstate, the Good Hands People. Remember, go to our website, apieceofthegame.tv, and tell us, what do you got? I've got the five Green Bay Packer yearbooks, one in the five years that Vince Lombardi coached them to championships. I have a one-of-a-kind uh, poster board for my bar mitzvah party. You can follow us at apieceofthegame.tv. Drop us a line and tell us, what do you got? Guests of A Piece of the Game stay at the beautiful Omni Chicago Hotel, located in the heart of the city on Michigan Avenue. A Piece of the Game, winner of two Emmy Awards, sponsored by Allstate. The Good Hands People. Well, it is raining, and since we are in a rain delay, that seems appropriate. It's about the first time here in these last couple of hours it has rained 
Uh, and we're not sure how long it'll last, but uh, we have been under a delay for almost two hours. As the Cubs and Reds are trying to kick off a three game weekday series. Three here, three in Milwaukee, and then the Cubs will play in the wild card game a week from tomorrow. Another installment of a piece of the game coming up, and we'll continue to update you from Great American Ballpark. This jacket is Walter Payton's letter jacket. I think you guys got a screaming deal on this jacket. It's priceless. What's in the vault this month? Any boxing collector, you know, would love to have this as a centerpiece in their collection. This is a football signed by the Iowa Hawkeyes Rose Bowl Championship team. I got an authentic football, and I got a signed by Peyton Manning. My mom said, get his autograph, his batting average, and the date. And when I said that, George goes, do you want my phone number, too? Most true sports fans have something they cherish, from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. Greatness was saved, a piece of the game. Sponsored by Allstate. A piece of the game, where we take the show on the road and anyone can walk in with their sports treasures, big or small. You want the real price on what those memories are worth? Our independent experts, some of the best in the business, are here and asking, what do you got? Have we got some great sports treasures for you this time? Hello, I'm David Kaplan, your host and wingman here at B-Dubs in Old Orchard, just outside the city of Chicago. Let me hear, what do you got? We got Buffalo Bills helmets, both side, uh, Marv Levy on one side, James Lofton, Buffalo Bills great on the other side. Grew up in, in Rochester, New York, huge Bills fan. Marv Levy means a lot to me, I've read his book, and I got to tell him that, I got to shake his hand. Find another team that's gonna go to four straight Super Bowls, we're proud of that. Bill Eve, more life. You got a Bill Eve. Hey, what do you got? The baseball player with the most hits of all time, Pete Rose. Back when he was on his uh, quest to surpass Ty Cobb, Pete Rose was in Wrigley Field. This is the swing, it was a single to left field, and this is the, the hit that tied the record. Pete signed it. You know, if you got that signed today, what he charge you? Oh yeah. A couple hundred bucks, probably. Yep, and some drinks and dinner, too. Hey, what do you got? This is a football signed by the Iowa Hawkeyes Rose Bowl Championship team. When I was a kid, we would always go down to the Iowa games. It was a big thing. My older brother, 13 years older, he gave me this when I was eight years old. But I've still got it. Alex Karras, I thought he was on here, but I can't find his name. It looks like it could belong to the, uh, you know, the New England Patriots, doesn't it? <laughs> of a Mount Rushmore of Chicago athletes, Walter Payton is on it. Sheila Burbridge is the principal at the high school Walter Payton attended in Columbia, Mississippi. Okay, this jacket is Walter Payton's letter jacket. How did you guys get the jacket back? Well, the uh, sports memorabilia guy who had owned the jacket put the jacket up for sale. So the different alumni from Columbia High School got together and decided that we would figure out a way to acquire this jacket and bring it back home where it belonged. No question. Within two days, they donated enough money to beat the auction to get the jacket back. People come by still and take pictures of the trophies and the things that Walter helped win for the school and his jacket. Oh, they do all the time. We have visitors that come from all over the country. And I got to meet Walter several times. What a wonderful person that he was. Phenomenal football player, but an even better person. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's beloved in that community. Oh, he is. He is a group of former...